In this video, I'm going to answer the question, if you're not using the new AdWords interface, are you missing out? Hi, I'm Ed Leek from Ad Evolver, and today we're going to take a look at what's new in the new AdWords interface for 2018. So, what's new in the new version of AdWords? Well, compared to the old interface, it is visually more pleasing, but that comes with pros and cons, as I'm just going to show you now. So, the old AdWords interface was very tabular, and when you log into a new AdWords account, you get a overview tab, which is broken down into key components, some useful, some not so much. Um, at the top is your chart, and you can change that as you could the old way, Secondly is your past seven days new words or search terms that have appeared in your ad groups. And this is quite useful for a quick, quick dive. Uh, but the second area, which is probably the most useful, is the biggest changes based on your uh, date range that you've set. So this is quite useful because from a top level perspective, you can see where cost has changed, click through rate, CPC, your biggest changes essentially, or perhaps you've had uh, a conversion drop off recently. And you can use this area to quickly diagnose top level dips in or uh, increases in costs and conversion that sort of thing so i i like that little visualization that, that's that's quite handy next is a pretty standard campaigns overview just showing your top spenders um the top five uh, then dropping down to your top spending uh, top five keywords and then then probably the the next or well, the second best bit of this interface in uh, our opinion is the searches uh, component. So this card or component brings uh, to your attention the, the search terms that people have typed into Google. But more interestingly, it has a words component, which is essentially an n-gram analysis highlighting the most frequently appearing single words in your account. So from a very quick top level perspective. This gives you an idea for new keywords and potentially negatives if you're spotting keyword patterns in here that don't actually make sense. And of course, you can click through to these and do further analysis. Now, there are pros and cons to this. Again, it's a top level analysis and how useful it is in isolation at this level is up for debate, but it's nice to have. And next, again, another component or card as google would call it is the most searched ads and again don't know how useful this is to you personally uh, if, you, if you're quite strict on your ad copy testing and so on this might not make much difference or much sense for you to even pay attention to and then the final row uh, if you're looking at this on a, a wider or a 1080p desktop is Auction Insights devices day and hour, so essentially day parting. Auction Insights is interesting because it gives you a nice visualization of where you sit in comparison to competitors for impression share and so on. Um, secondly is a device breakdown, a nice simple visual of how your mobile devices, uh, tablets and computers fare, and you can obviously break that down into the metrics that you care the most about. Again, this is more of a top level component for reporting, not particularly useful at this level, unless you have very specific KPIs in your business to be targeting de mobile devices, for example. And finally, day and hour with a nice heat map. I say nice, not sure how beneficial this is gonna be at this stage. If you could then apply this in some way or actually edit this in some way, such as bids, using it to manipulate your bids on a 24-7 a basis, that'd be fantastic. But I appreciate why Google may not implement that level of granularity into account because it may be too complicated for some people. It may not be appropriate because some people don't have enough data to take advantage of it and so on. So again, this is kind of a visual indication. It might help in your account to spot uh, specific trends in the week where perhaps a day is overspending uh, and underperforming based on clicks and conversions. But you can do a, a more detailed analysis in analytics uh, using all your channel data and additional metrics, which would be my preference. And the other funky thing about the overview tab is it's actually available at the account level, but you can dig down into the campaign and ad group level too. So that's pretty nifty. 
Another quick thing to mention is the shortcut. So if you hit the question mark on your keyboard, uh, it will bring up, as I'm going to put on the screen now for you, it'll bring up the keyboard shortcuts, which is a nod from Google in the direction of speeding things up for us as we use the Outwords interface. Um, quite handy if you can memorize some of these features and shortcuts. There is also a pretty decent search facility now at the top of the screen. Uh, if you simply click go to and then type, type in, uh, it will bring up the appropriate area of the account. So that's nice for quick navigation. So another feature that you're going to appreciate if you're working in the new AdWords dashboard is uh, call extension bid adjustments. So if you are getting people or wanting people to call your business, then having the option to bid up or bid down uh, call extensions is actually a nice feature, allowing you to get a bit more impression share on your call extensions. So a new feature is the showcase shopping ads. Now these are essentially collections, so more of a brand awareness thing, but allowing you to show a collection of products on the search results page instead of just a single, single product. So this is a, again a nice, feature for shopping and something that's only available in the new interface. The audience manager has changed. It's essentially simplified, uh, bringing everything for search and display into one area. So not too much to say about that. It seems like it's a beneficial change. Um, uh, it's, it's improved based on the old uh, UI, certainly. So this is good. Uh, within here, um, or should I say close to the audiences is not only do we have demographic uh, search and display bid adjustments now, but it's also household income bid adjustments. So I believe it's only available in the US and certain regions uh, to start with, but this allows you to bid based on how household income known to Google. In addition, it also allows you to report on layered audiences, so it shows you household income and the demographic information, such as age and gender, which gives you essentially an even more granular way to, to review and bid on and optimize against your audiences. So that's pretty potent, that's pretty good. And of course, promotion extensions, not just for shopping, these can be for biz any business that wants to offer a discount. People are mixed on promotion extensions. Some people like them, some people don't. I'd have to say that they're pretty decent. It depends on your business, but promotion extensions are a, a visual um, lift to your ad and they can increase click-through rate, which Google likes. And if you do the right thing by sending people to the right landing page based on the search term, then there's no reason why click-through rate is a negative metric. So promotion extensions only available in the new interface and they're pretty decent. They're worth a try, particularly for uh, shopping outlets and retailers who want to increase and lift clicks based on the adverts around them. Now here's something interesting, ad variations, which is essentially a ad testing suite within reason that Google's implemented. Now what's interesting about this, there's three key components to the ad variations. Number one, there's a find and replace facility. So you can test certain words in your ads very quickly, uh, such as the call to action you can switch out. Secondly, you can modify and update text within a set of adverts to test all at once. And finally, you can swap headlines. So it's a very simple test to switch, do a switcheroo on your headlines. Essentially, Google's added this feature to help speed up ad testing, because let's face it, ad testing isn't straightforward. It isn't quick. It does take time to create new ads, pause off old and do variations. So that's a nice little feature. And the final two new features are the probably biased more towards the marketing professional and the agency side because the MCC now has a, essentially a currency converter. So instead of a mixed uh, currency view, you can now actually break down and convert each currency so you have a running total in your native currency, which is handy. And finally is dashboards, which is a essentially reports polished. So it takes reporting components and puts them into a dashboard for you. There is a, a template that you can use to give you an example. And this is nice to create simple reports, perhaps internal reports or top level reports. Are they good enough for an agency to use for clients? Perhaps not, but they're certainly better than nothing. And let's face it, reporting for agencies and internal staff is a bit of a pain in the backside. So any help from Google to improve reporting can only be a good thing. 
There's been a lot of mixed press about the new AdWords interface, and I think one of the key areas for me personally that has made me resist the change is the choice of font and colors. There's a lot of soft gray going on compared to the old interface, which is very contrasty, and therefore, okay, it's not as attractive and as modern and hip looking, but it was easier to use in that respect. Google know a lot about this topic, so who am I to argue, but that's just my personal opinion. Hope you enjoyed that video, hope you found it useful, and hopefully now, if you haven't already, you're gonna have a dabble around in the new interface. It's actually not that scary. In the next one, we're gonna go through five specific things that are missing or might trip you up from the new AdWords interface. So take a look.